Dynamesh has really opened up a lot of potential for us as artists. I've been teaching anatomy in ZBrush for a long time, and uh, before I had to use ZSphere's, and uh, I was able to get ZSphere's down in a teachable format, but with Dynamesh, man, the world is a different place. Really, really cool place. So let's take a look at an example of how we can go in and start to learn about muscles. Now this entire skeleton could quite easily be done entirely inside of ZBrush with Dynamesh. Now in this case it wasn't, but if I jump over here, this was. And this is somewhere around 45 minutes or so of sculpting. So there's more work to be done, but we're not too far off at this point. But what I want to show you is not just how you create the skeleton, but I want to show you muscles, because that's a lot of fun. So once you've got the skeleton in place and you're ready to say add a bicep, then we're going to come in and say just append a simple sphere. Okay, I just need to add some piece of geometry. And then I'm going to come down to geometry and say turn on group and dynamesh. And then I'm going to come over here to the uh, to the brush palette. I'm going to go to Curve Tube. Okay, Curve Tube. This is really one of the most powerful parts of this entire equation. Come in there. Okay, Dynamesh is on. So what we're really talking about is we're just clicking on the model and dragging out this stroke. And what do you know? But we are getting a piece of geometry that's ready for us to get in and sculpt. Now this alone would be pretty awesome. But I'm going to show you you know, a little bit more advanced because keep in mind the bicep is called bicep for a reason. Got any ideas? Why would they call it the bicep? Bi for two. Two heads. Okay, and so we've got one head that's coming up over the head of the humerus and then attach right at the top of the, I shouldn't say attached, sorry, it originates up at the top of the glenoid cavity. And even more appropriately, would be to say it's coming down on its way, on its way to its insertion at the radius, skipping right over the humerus, but acting upon the humerus, acting upon the upper arm. So it's going from that glenoid cavity coming all the way down to the radius. And then we've got another head which is coming up and attaching to the uh, to the coracoid process. So you've got these two heads that we really want to be mindful of. So let's go in and change this around a little bit. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and uh, let's check our stroke palette. So we're really clear on what we're doing. Uh, we can use this as a line, which is what I'm doing. That's a setting I had to turn on. And let's make sure Dynamesh is on and I didn't accidentally turn that off. Yeah, we're good. So with transparency off, really important you turn that off, we're going to come in, go from the radius all the way up. And uh, I'm going to go all the way to the glenoid cavity. Okay, and I'm going to come up here and say, uh, let's go to the stroke palette. I'm going to turn size on. So this way, with size, it's going to vary based on wherever I click. So I'm going to increase the size a little bit and click right in the belly of the muscle. There we go. So that's going to cause it to change a bit. It's going to boom. All right, and we're going to get kind of a natural muscle out of that. So that's kind of cool. I am going to come back in here and turn bend on, though. And I'm going to start to bend this a bit. Okay, it's going to really mess with. In fact, I got to move that back and then pull that out. Just about like that. Okay, all messed up, right? But no worries. I'm just going to click here. 
and then it'll readjust. Okay, let's delete that curve. I'm going to start to treat this as though it is a separate piece of geometry. Uh, smooth that tendon out. Okay, and that's my long head of the bicep. Gotta make some room for the brachialis in there, all that stuff. But it's all stuff you can be doing, don't sweat it. Okay, pull this up. And uh, let's go a little bit thinner. There we go. Make sure you connect it all the way to that glenoid cavity. There we go. Okay, make sure you set it nicely right in that groove. It's designed for that groove. There we go. All right. So we've got that little part of it established. Now let's go in and get the other part of this established. So we're going to come back into curve tubes. Core code breaky the core code process. Okay. End point, move that end point in, turning size off. Don't want size to be a factor here. Just want point A to point B to be kind of set up. That's the most important thing for me in this equation. Okay. Yeah. The invert. Really want to make sure that that insertion gets handled. Okay. And now inflate. And let's really smooth this out. can go in, delete that curve mode temporarily, and we can just make these guys really mesh. Okay, now they should be separate groups, and in terms of DynaMesh, I have group on, but I can turn that off and get these guys merged into this fairly complex shape. Uh, Got to be really careful where things get thin. And when you're in DynaMesh, you might almost want to emphasize things and avoid having something be too thin because otherwise you can get in trouble. Um, we can flatten some places. But at a certain point, we need to turn DynaMesh off, and it's no longer really what we're looking for. But quite quickly, quite easily, we've been able to put a muscle in there from origin to insertion with the you know simplicity of the bicep with this really amazing tool, DynaMesh. Hope you enjoyed looking at that, and good luck with your sculpting.